let's just say like I'm out of town, you go to some like content creator event or like, let's make it even bigger, the Oscars. Kate I'm Beckinsale. giving everyone my number. <laughs> I'm actually exactly. going. I'm actually going home with Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. You're out of town. You said. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome back, back to, back Get to, to Be Straight. Straight. I'm Alex. And I am John. And where you are? Gracious, 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 gracious host. Gracious host. How are you, John? I'm so great. How are you, Alex? Why are you saying it like that? Like, are you not I, great? I, well, I thought you were. I thought you were saying it in a way. So I was just oh. like mimicking how you were saying it. No, I feel like I'm great. Yeah. Like this was a good weekend. I don't know. It was a good, good time. Oh, this episode comes out on 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Ooh. I hope everyone is doing something fun in Are the we? sun. I don't know. I don't think that we have plans yet. So hopefully. I feel like it's hard for us to commit to anything. What? Like every year on the 4th of July, this time of year, we're always working. Like we always, it was always wedding season. But what what can we do now? I, just I feel like I need to turn more towards you. I feel like we should do something. Yeah, I, I do too. That's like the one holiday I actually want to do something on. I always want to like be on a boat and like party on a boat, no, but I never get to do to that. need to meet someone who has a yacht. A yacht <laughs> Honestly, or a boat or a like a pontoon boat. <laughs> like yeah. Anything on the water would be nice. People in our neighborhood have been setting off fireworks, which is shocking for California because I'm like, there's no way this is legal. Like... With the fires, how? How could this be? Why legal? would you want to? I don't know. I would not want to be responsible. Dude, poor Kobe. He's just freaking out. I know. He gets so scared. Yesterday, one went off and his heart, you would have thought it was going one bajillion miles a minute. I know. I tried to hold oh, him. Oh, you like didn't wake up at like 2 a.m. There was another one? Oh, it blasted off and like close like close to us. It was like boom. Sleep through anything. I know. Speaking of Kobe. So we went to an event <gasps> with yes, Kobe. Yes, Kobe. We went to a Purina event. It was like event. West something semifinals. It, it was, was a dog competition. <laughs> right, but it was like Western Conference or something semifinals. But it was so cool watching the dogs jump. Athletes. Athletes. Are they the athletes or are their trainers the athletes? I don't know. Because they were intense. And they had to run around. It just... It made me feel like a terrible dog parent because Kobe is not trained at all. No. Like Kobe could sit and give paw and he's like a normal dog. But seeing these dogs, like the the owners were pointing out the like bar that they were supposed to jump at. And they were like, get that, get that. And the dogs it was were intense. like, it was, it so was started intense. started at 19 feet. Then it was like 20, 22. I don't know. But it started at 19. These dogs are just like. Jumping Flying for the it's crazy. The yeah. It's awesome. wild. Give, Give him a little credit. I almost Kobe? said goo. <laughs> Give Kobe a little credit because he was so well He's behaved. the best behaved. Dog. I know. Other dogs he's, bark at him, and well, he's, he he was the best behaved until he the peed on the obstacle course. course. Yeah. So they, <laughs> I feel like the event we went to, they thought Kobe was like an athlete. So we've partnered with Purina before and we've made videos of Kobe looking like an athlete. So I don't know if maybe we just used a little bit too much movie magic and they thought that he was an athlete and that's why they invited him because they were like, Kobe gets to go on the course and run the course before any of the other dogs. And I was like, I don't think you guys know you Kobe. You don't realize he's nine. He's, he's not jumping over shit. Yeah. <laughs> It's not because he's nine. It's because he just does whatever the fuck he wants. That's why. He's he's T R E A T. He's right next to us. T R E A T uh, motivated. Yes. Oh, look at him moving around now. Yeah, they gave us like a professional trainer. She, they're like, so how is he motivated? Like, what's he good at? Obstacles? Does he catch the first? I'm like, lady, he doesn't do anything. No. Yeah. I was like, he's good at. So we had to coax him to like even. He didn't even try jogging. He like walked through the course. By the way, there's people in the stands you watching. You would have thought that he cured cancer with how how ecstatic everyone was when he just walked through the hoop. Anyways, <laughs> I'm I'm holding his leash. I looked away for one second, and I swear I brought him to go to the bathroom like a hundred times that day. I I then I hear this woman from behind me like he's peeing, he's peeing, <laughs> like losing her fucking mind. And I look down, and Kobe peed on the um. Course. One of the obstacles that the dogs jump over. And listen, I get it because I'm assuming, this is what I'm assuming, that the other dogs that are competing will smell the scent and it might throw them Fuck off them or up. they'll stop and pee. I mean, that was intense. I'm like, okay, I got it. 
First off, I didn't even ask to go we, through the yeah. fucking obstacle course. You told us we to. We didn't want this. No. We literally said, we're like, no, 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 it's fine. And we were like, all right, well, we'll get some shots for a video. But otherwise, we were like, no, Kobe's fine. Like The rest of the time, we sat on the sidelines like, we'll just, just watch the pros. But Kobe, he was interested. I love how we're like talking about him like he is an actual child. Like we're like, he had so much fun. I didn't say that. You did. You're the one who sounds crazy. He did have fun, though. Me, you're the one talking about him and hyping him up the whole time. Like he's a good boy. Well, he, he so was well. good. The other dogs are barking at each other and stuff. Kobe was just chilling, doing his own thing. He knows he's a star. Yes. <laughs> so that was fun. And then we saw No Hard Feelings with uh, Jennifer Lawrence, which was hilarious. That movie was hilarious. I don't want to give any spoilers, but you should go no see spoilers, it. No spoilers, but so funny. There's like one unexpected scene where a twat, I was dying. A twat punch. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we'll say go if see it if i could be in a rom-com i would want to be oh 100 one or just she's be awesome or be yeah. in a movie with her yeah yeah she's hilarious but what else let's see uh our I'm... house is coming along great the team at bella development bella builders are crushing it they are it looks awesome yeah i'm so excited i'm getting nervous that they might finish it before like their time that they said because we're locked into this airbnb for four months mm -hmm. It's all right. We'll find something for them to do. Or also, I just feel like there are always delays having my dad work in this industry and growing up like nothing is on time ever. Right. In contract. You never know. Thing. Yeah. Well, was our our house in Richmond was a new build. Was that on time or was that ever delayed? I think that was on time. It was on time. That was built by like Ryan Holmes, like a it's a big right. like enterprise yeah. where they just like slam those things up. They like right. master it, but i crushing a lot of tea lately. Wait, did you want to give a brush clearance update? Yes. We, that we spoke about last week. So let's see. We got quoted $25,000 yeah, to move some fun. brush. Mm -hmm. That was fun. $25,000 to clean up our woods. LA is just loves to beat it into us, you know? We're not, we're not paying I'm, that. We're not doing that. But it's just like, <laughs> at that point, I'd be like, I have to sell the house. No, I know. It's just, it, it's, it's like those hidden things that I just feel like you always get bills in the mail. And I'm like, what is this? What is that? But it's just like $25,000 is not a small amount of money no. to just be like an un an unexpected cost. You know how like everyone has an emergency fund? Like, oh, if you're, you know, you need new tires I, or I whatever. I didn't get a good vibe from this dude anyways. The first thing he says to me, I just, not, he didn't name job because he didn't know the name, but the first thing he says, he's like, ugh, I just did uh, brush removal for this screenplay director up the street. I'm like, okay, And cool. we're like, cool. We have a podcast where we make $4. <laughs> yeah. But then he's like, yeah, and um, I, like, try to freak us out. Right. You know, he's just like, well, you're going to have to get a permit for this. Like, people try to sue me for everything. I'm like, okay, I just... Whatever. But anyways, so we're still dealing with that. We'll see. Yeah. Well, we do have to clear the brush, but we're going to try to not spend anywhere. We're, we're just going to have to strap up and do it ourselves, honestly. We will. Like, I'm not paying that I'll money. I'll strap goo to some ropes yeah. and yeah. I'll rappel them down the hill. Yeah. Do any of you guys want to help? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you beer. <laughs> right. But otherwise, uh, that's it. Just enjoying the nice weather, the sun. Yeah, so hope you guys are having fun today. But otherwise, should we jump into questions? Do you have any other updates? The only other update I have is when you cut me off when I was talking about peeing. Like I'm crushing tea at night, and the, oh, and the other sorry. night, the other night, I woke up to pee, and I don't turn the lights on because I don't want to wake you up because I'm being courteous. So like, when I go, I put my arm against the wall when I'm peeing, and I fucking fell asleep. I fell asleep, and I just slammed my head right into the wall, and I just pissed all over the toilet that's seat. fabulous that's lovely and did you clean it up probably not <laughs> did you I, yeah the next day oh no, yeah i'm not in the middle of the night i know exactly probably what you did to you probably didn't even use like clorox or anything you were just like water 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 this is fine <laughs> if it's wet i make it dry <laughs> that is not sanitizing the situation the amount of times that i have sat in your pee because you don't wipe that up either. That that should be an ick of mine. It's not an ick of mine, but we're I'm today, very it's not. courteous with no, lifting the just, seat up. You don't lift the seat up is a thing. I always so do except always for at down. night because my back's so stiff. I'm gonna blow my back out trying to bend down to like lift the oh seat up. God. And then I just end okay. Up you don't sitting in you don't your lift sprinkles. the seat up. People talk about this on podcasts all the time. The like 
seat up and down ratio. Down though is how it's supposed to be when you flush. So it doesn't spray all over your bathroom. So like it's, it should always be down. Which part? The seat, the whole seat, like the toilet cover. So technically the seat should be down when you flush, but instead you leave like the cover, the lid up, whatever, John, just don't pee on the seat. That's it. Like, okay. That's it. And if you do wipe it Before up. Before we fight, let's just jump into question, the questions. All right. So let's jump in. As someone who is beginning to plan a wedding and inflation killing me slowly, I want to hear your take on what is and is not worth spending money on for that special day. How do I, like, who are we going to cut out right now? What? What do you mean? Like, like vendors? vendors? I don't think it's, it has to start with a who. Yes, when your guest list gets too big, guest list is the number one way to cut costs because when you go over a certain amount, that's an extra table, that's an extra centerpiece, that's extra food, alcohol, favors, whatever that is. I think off the top, like, I mean, we could go into so many things that you could cut out. Invitations, you could just do them online. You could cut out favors, no one gives a fuck. Name cards, also no one gives a fuck. Like what else? So like any of those like paper product things that you use for You don't like have to get a band. You could get a DJ. Florals is another way to cut costs. Like you could spend so much money I was on about florals. to say, dude, fuck florals. I, I was, obviously our person was terrible. So I'm kind of like Jaded. biased against it. But like get your, what is it called? What, bouquet. Get your bouquet. You could it. get a <laughs> lot of your florals from Costco or Trader Joe's if you have help. I just think. Though, like those are the big budget things when it comes to like, or florals can be big budget things. The other things that we mentioned are kind of like small, but I I'm think thinking about like vendors, you need everyone. Like you do not skimp on food. Do not skimp on alcohol. Those are huge. Do not skimp on music. That's huge. The thing is you do get what you pay for though. Like if you skimp out well, on a photographer. Why wouldn't cut corners on those three specifically? I don't know, but you could get beer and wine. Like if you, like you don't have to have an open bar. You don't have to have top shelf liquor if you want. Like again, it's your wedding. You're the ones paying for it. Like I just think that there's other things that you can cut down on. You, like, get, a, you get a lope. I think that you do need a photographer and a videographer, but- if you don't, if you can't afford a top notch one, just get someone, just get someone at least. Just get something. Just get something. But yeah, I don't think that you have to do. I think the paper product thing was, that's smart. Because you don't need all that stuff. You could do like e -vites. Oh, or like signage yeah. can like add up. There's just so many little things. I don't know. Like you can spend anywhere from $5,000 for your wedding or, you know, however low you want, zero dollars to a million dollars. I think you're the another big thing is picking your venue because price shopping out the venues, because you might get discounts if you're incorporating their vendors, you know. I, I think that's like the first step looking into it that way, where you can kind of like financially make a decision. Ultimately though, guest list is what's gonna help you save money. But even if you do have a 30-person wedding, you could still spend a hefty amount depending on the type of wedding you want. So it's really just personal preference. Um, either way, I will say get photo and video. And top shelf liquor. Okay, sure. Next question. <laughs> My boyfriend wakes up at 4.45 a.m. for work and I don't have to wake up until 7. Our bathroom and closet are in our bedroom and I have a hard time going back to sleep. Do you have any recommendations on how to get better sleep when someone wakes up earlier? Do you uh, wake up at all ever? Mm. No. John, you slam all the drawers. I feel like when you wake up earlier than me, you're like, I'm going to make it my when mission. I was, when I was I'm going to make it my mission to wake Alex up. When I was in OT and I, I went to work by 530 in the morning, did you ever wake up? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you didn't. And like when I go to the gym early, I don't wake you up. I'm awake. No, you're I'm definitely not. awake, but I just go back to sleep. Oh, I think though... It's, it's, this is a common occurrence between couples. It's like, you almost feel like your partner is going out of their way to wake you up, like turning the lights on or slamming drawers around. I think just if you have all the things that you need set aside, so maybe do that with your boyfriend, set his shit aside that he needs for the next day, get his like toothbrush, his contacts, whatever the fuck it is. I'm pretty Dude, sure big boy can do that himself. No, that's what I'm saying though. Like work with him, be like my friend, my right. boyfriend, my love. 
can we gather your things so that you're not rummaging? Because I did that. Yeah. I laid out, though I've been laying out my clothes since I was a kid. My parents told me I, I would lay my clothes out like a crime scene because my dyslexic ass, which probably has nothing, has to, do nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's but it's OCD. Maybe John. OCD, that's sure. OCD. I would lay it out. My parents said it looked like a crime scene. I have my shirt laid out, my pants out, socks, shoes. And you, you I wanted to make sure I had everything before I started the day. You haven't done that in a while, but like you still... Because as well you, as an OT, I had, yeah. I had my clothes on and stuff, but I also never turned the light on. Right. So I had my cell phone out and I was looking for my shit. So I wanted everything. You knew exactly where it was to get right. it. Man, that feels like years ago. I know. That's crazy. I remember that. Yeah, it was tough. Different times. And okay. I'll wake you up. So yeah, I think <laughs> just uh, being prepared. Also, I mean, if you're waking up early... I mean, go back to sleep if you want, but maybe utilize that time. Right. Like, I remember when you would leave, I would feel more inclined to wake up, like, not so much further after you. Like, you would leave at, like, 5.30 and I'd be up by 6 because I'm like, well, he's up. I want to be. And then also when we go to bed at the same time, right. just made things easier. All right. Next question. How do you deal with friends and family who constantly ask about having children? We are not completely sure what we're doing when it comes to children. We just got married last year and we are just enjoying married life. I know it's no one's business and it's just plain rude to ask, but I would love to hear your opinion. We're all in the same boat. Yeah. It is a constant conversation we have. And I think it's more so this year than it has been in the past. I don't I know it's why. it's just because we're getting older and people are like, Alex's dusty, crusty eggs are not going to be fertile for so much longer. So what is she doing? I'm like, worry about yourself. I'm like, because we really don't know. I don't know. It's tough. Depends like, on the day. I hear different things from multiple people. Like if it's not a fuck yes, it's a fuck no. Just tell but them But then some people are like, you know, you're never going to be ready. So give it a shot. You know, I don't know. And then some people who are like, if you're not sure, yeah, then absolutely not. But in your situation, when or like even for us, when people ask, we don't get offended by that because I think it might feel different if we were trying and we were having like difficulty conceiving. It might be more emotional for us to talk about. But you could just reply sarcastically and just say, we're still practicing, you know, or we're trying or I don't know, like there's other ways to respond. Or tell them, how do you know we're not? Yeah. How do you know we're not trying? Make them feel bad for asking you. That'll make them, that'll shut them up. Yeah, just, I don't know. I just think that you... You bring up a good point, though. Like, if we were trying, that would be very hard for us to hear that question. Yeah, if, like, it was difficult, mm -hmm. you know. But again, like, other people don't have to, like, necessarily... You just have to be prepared for that type of question, and you can't control the questions that people are going to ask you. You could just say you're uncomfortable at answering that question or just like put it back on them and be like, we're just practicing. What about you? Yeah. I wouldn't say the uncomfortable thing. That just, then that makes the whole. Make them uncomfortable. If they're going to make you uncomfortable, make it uncomfortable. I don't know. I just think people, when they do ask, it's not with ill intent. I think no one's being malicious when they're asking you. They're just genuinely curious. Which is not self-aware to know enough that that's not a question you really ask. Right. I don't know, though. It's never bothered me when we got that question. But again, it's because we truly don't know either. Right. They're like, do you want kids? I'm like, I don't know. We don't know. I don't know. We're waiting for a sign. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. My neighbors have terrible children. Always outside, running wild, no parents in sight. The youngest is only two. They have been found in our garage multiple times messing with my husband's tools or taking out our kids' toys. We have been closing our garage pretty quickly lately so the kids don't bother us, and now I feel like the parents are mad at us. For example, ignoring us if we wave or say hi. Are we assholes for acting Dude, fuck like that them. with kids? Why the fuck? Why are you even waving to them? I'd be like, I'd be doing this. Go, like... Manage your children. Why are they in my fucking For yard? Me, I'd be more concerned about the kids hurting themselves on my property. And like, then you get sued. Exactly. Like, I'm like, don't go in my, my garage tools? with my tools. Exactly. I mean, we don't have any tools. I know. But <laughs> we have like brooms. I would be like, you're going to hurt yourself. Even so, though, like we don't have tools. I would be more concerned about like kids falling down the stairs or anything on your property. Not okay. With that said, though, they're kids. 
you know, I wouldn't. Are they watching their kids though? No, I'm. what I'm saying is you think that you're acting like an asshole to the kids. Like I wouldn't take it out on them. Because no, take, kids, it the take it out on the parents. Take it out on the parents. Yeah. I would definitely take it on the parents. Like, why are your kids unsupervised at my home? Where I am now liable, like but that I think is that's not what okay. It is, though. Like it's communicating that to them and saying because the it, fact that right they now they don't know that this is not okay. Dude, people like, are so unaware and petty and pe- again passive aggressive, and that's why I think like if they're not waving to you or they're ignoring you, it's because there's there's a conversation that needs to be had. I would go up to them and be like, "Hey, for safety concerns, we would just appreciate if your kids did not play." on our property without your supervision. That's what you would say? Something along those lines. Hey, <laughs> let me set the scene. Set the scene. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. Uh, I'm just going to let you know, don't have your fucking kids over at my house fucking around with my stuff. Like, where are you? Where Are you not watching your kids? it's not your responsibility either. Like, I get in neighborhoods, like, like when me growing up, for example, we had so many kids in our neighborhood. So we were always at like someone else's houses and like the parents treated us as if Do we were Do they have all kids? kids? Do the neighbors have kids? Yeah, I guess. Because she said that they go into her garage, play with her husband's tools and take out her kids' toys. So well, now, think- now I'm wondering... That's what I mean. Like, Are they friends? Like the yeah. kids friends with each other? Because that's also different too. That's like, different. Because it's like, yeah, if your kids are playing, because that's how it was in my neighborhood. We were all uh, same, kids same. playing around. Like This is different if like you didn't have kids and these kids were just coming over to your, your house. Like, But if your kids are friends with them, then I can see that dynamic of like going back and forth to each other's homes. Okay, that's different. But it just depends. It's like, are your kids playing with them or are they just like showing up in your garage <laughs> uninvited? Right. Ooh. I mean, I just think like there's no reason to be petty. I would communicate and just do it as an adult. Set the scene, John. I just wish. Hey, we, Bill. I wish we got that piece of information that says like our kids play with their kids. Because this yeah. would be totally different. I don't know. It just said taking out our kids toys, etc. I mean, All right, well, then, yeah, then you need to just have like be open and, you know, not aggressive with how you talk to him they just let but you ultimately know. like it's more of a safety concern sure like i don't anything. feel comfortable hey just gonna let you know i don't feel comfortable your kids coming in the garage i have sharp tools in there i don't want them to get hurt because it's not your responsibility to look out for other people's kids but with that said i do think that there is neighborly right. relations where you can look out for other people's kids they're kids you know and if your kids are friends with their kids look out for them right it's not that big of a deal but moving on So I'm seven months pregnant and my boyfriend's mom passed away last week. I've been with him every step of the way, making funeral arrangements and helping him in any way that I can. Today, he mentioned that he invited a certain individual who was a previous friends with benefits. Should I be worried or upset about this? Should I confront him about it? I know he's going through a lot and the timing isn't the best, but I can't help but feel like I'm not enough for him during this time if he felt the need to invite a former lover to his mother's services. Does he need comfort from somebody else other than his girlfriend for the wedding or for the wedding, for the, for the wedding. funeral? Because that's what it seems like to me. You're just, does she know this person? This is, this person's out of nowhere. Like, hey, I'm going to invite, you see where I'm coming from right so, now? Uh, yes. But like, I'm thinking, because this person doesn't sound like, you said friends with benefits. So to me, that doesn't sound like a romantic, like, Girlfriend, boyfriend. You're partner. inviting someone you fucked to your mom's funeral. Why? Does well, is there like a connection there that like that's really gonna my, comfort you for the funeral, well, bro? No, I don't think that devil's advocate. I don't think that he's looking for personal comfort. I think it's a respect of his mom. Like if this was a friends with benefits and this girl knew his mom and had a relationship with the family being friends with benefits, maybe. And that's just me playing devil's advocate. It's like maybe this person had a relationship with his mom and knew her and that's why. But otherwise... Why would you even want to stir the pot? Don't tell that shit. Have you ever had like exes, parents pass away and like you were there for them? No. I'm pretty sure all my exes hate me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like, okay. that's so wild to me, especially if she doesn't even know who this person is. When she said this certain person. Well, no, I think she does. I don't know if they're friends, but she said he invited a certain individual who was a previous friends with benefits. So obviously she knows who this person is. Or maybe he just told her up front, hey, I'm going to invite this person that my mom knows. I used to hook up with her. I'm sure that she knew about 
That's a weird, You're, that would be a weird thing to say like leading up to that and be like, this is who this person do is. Do not put it past anyone no, I'm sure to do something that she stupid. Knew, I'm sure she knew who this person was. And then he was like, I invited so-and-so. Whatever, it doesn't matter. She, he invited this girl and used to be friends with benefits. I, Anyways, yeah, I think you have the right to be annoyed. You're the one that's pregnant, setting all this up for his mom. And then he is like, I'm going to bring this person, this special someone to my mom's funeral. I would never. That may or may not comfort me during the time of I would of never remorse. expect to be invited to an ex's funeral ever. I wouldn't go. But if you invited, like if you had invited a previous person that you had relations with. I would never. I would be like, what? I mean, it would be different if it was like a public funeral and she showed up in support of you. I'd be like, okay. But like, it's the invitation I think that is the issue. You know what I mean? All of it is a fucking issue. No, don't. So yeah, okay, so what should she do? Tell him. You could you could fucking set up the rest of the funeral. If you want to invite your special someone, I'm out. No, I'm just, I'm annoyed for her. I get why she's annoyed. This poor woman is doing all this stuff for her boyfriend. And then he, like, I don't know, but what's it's he like, doing? Nothing yeah, for the funeral. Like, and then he's like, I'm going to invite someone. Yeah, but he's person. like, his mom just passed away. Like, is this a, the time to bring this up? You know, like, he's grieving People do weird things when they're grieving. I don't know. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Like, is is it the right time to confront him about this? Yeah. This <laughs> man, the man, the fuck up. That you're, is, that's you're so, talking about like, him. The why boyfriend? even fucking just? Why even do that? I'm, it's just an unnecessary thing. Invite all the other people in your mom's life. I'm sure she knows a ton of people. That person does not need to come. Right? Like, is would he? So, come, would this person conclusion, come to your wedding? Like, if you guys are getting married, would he invite her to your wedding? Like, are you friends with her? I have more questions. I think that's why. I just have more questions. Okay. Well, I don't need any more <laughs> you, knowledge from wow, this. Wow. That's crazy that you don't need more context. Yeah, I'm just with her. You have the right to be annoyed. You do have the right to be annoyed, but I, I do have more questions. Mm. Moving on. My best friend's husband late night likes my bikini pictures. One in particular from seven years ago. This has been going on for years. I would wake up with a like from him anywhere from midnight to 3 a.m. on that picture. He will go through spurts of doing it a few nights in a row, then stopping. Then a month or two later, it's happening again, all on the same picture. This is weird, right? And now he's been getting inappropriately physical with me. It started as brushing behind me on my butt. So I didn't really think he was doing it on purpose, but now he has legitimately grabbed my ass on multiple occasions. I now do not let him near me when we hang out. But do I tell her? They've been married for almost 15 years and have three kids. I'm glad there was a follow-up at the end because I was like, who is this person to you? <laughs> so it's her friend's husband. Her friend's husband. Uh, yeah, I would say mm -hmm. something. You know what he's doing with that photo. This isn't like, you know, previous questions where it's a secret that you're keeping. This is where you're physically getting sexually assaulted, this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. So... Yeah, you have the right to say something. Because it's not just at this point the photo liking, which is creepy in itself. But now that he's getting physical with you, he's crossing a line. Be prepared, though. I'm sure oh your friend's going to be like, how dare you in the beginning? Like, how do you, you know, but all you can be is honest. Yeah. I, and I think, too, if you were in your friend's position, wouldn't you want to know? Like, if you were doing this to someone... I would want to know. Right. And I would feel like immediately I would be defensive and be like, you just want my husband? Like, you're crazy. But if someone came to me with receipts and like had screenshots of all of the likes, like I would start, I would start taking screenshots of these and having maybe get some history. proof first before coming to her. I wouldn't just come to her with an accusation because she probably won't. At least from you. the pictures. But I mean, if you guys are good enough friends, I would trust that one of my good friends or even if... I don't know. It would depend on who it was, honestly. But if it was one of my good friends coming to me and telling me that you were doing this, I would I would have to believe. Like, why would they? Why would they be? Making sure. I mean, this you up? you believed a random person at the bar that I said that. And I was, was being it a an lie? Asshole. No, it wasn't. You literally told that person to say that. So it was the truth, John. <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. It's uh, you do have to prepare though that your friend is going to be defensive. Oh, and 100%. Pissed. Yeah. No one wants to think their marriage is falling apart. 
Uh, that just gives me that ick. Yeah, I would definitely say something just because what the fuck. Also, like, dude... Dude can't just like take a screenshot of your photo if like he really wants to, you know, have it in his. He wants thing. no. He wants you to know. You think? Fuck yeah. Oh, I think that he's if just he's like stupid. Photos. He's probably drunk if it's obviously late at night like Midnight that. Midnight and three a.m. He also wants you to know he's he's doing it secret. It's toxic. It's like this secret thing. Not that me he's thinking getting- that he's like trying to secretly do it without you knowing no, that if he's he like continuously it. is doing it and he's grabbing your ass that's not like him trying to be right subtle about anything mm. Mm. yeah you gotta say something don't love it don't love it but get some proof first next question I need some real advice since all of my friends are crazy, but I'm trying to be reasonable. For context, John, my boyfriend, 24 years old, and I have been together three years. We are currently living together. He is typically very respectful of our relationship, and we communicate. She put a little... Communication. We haven't done that in a while. (laughs) We communicate pretty well when things bother us. However, we do not see eye to eye with an ongoing female work relationship. He has made it known he is into older women, and I am only four years older than he is. He works in a mostly male profession when there is only one 35 year old female clerk. They often jokingly flirt, say inappropriate things, or will text in relation to on the job work or sometimes outside of work. She will vent to him about her. Her lackluster marriage and say how she wishes she had a handsome young man like him to laugh and adventure with. I tried to be friendly with her by adding her on Facebook and she blocked me. I have told him before that it makes me uncomfortable and I feel like it is disrespectful to our relationship. And he always comforts me and insists that it is harmless and silly. Is it something I should be worried about or am I crazy? My friends tell me to message her husband. I just want her to stay in her lane, but he is new to the company and does not want to stir up any issues. Please help. Him downplaying your feelings. hundred percent. I'm like, my issue isn't with the the woman who he's working with. It's with your fucking boyfriend. And and even your friend saying, you should message her husband. Why? You should be confronting your boyfriend. He's the one who's responding to her. I mean, I think she says enough by blocking you. So she obviously doesn't care about exactly. your feelings at all. Your boyfriend's defending that. He wants that attention. He loves that attention. I hate, though, in these situations when in relationships, the female or like the woman goes for the other woman. Go for your man. Like he's the one disrespecting you. This girl like owes you nothing. Ultimately, is it shitty? It's yeah, just, it's just natural to be that way. Like. I would obviously I can't punch you, so I'd punch the guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, but like your issue would be less with the guy and more with me, yeah, as it should be. But I'm gonna take my frustrations out on that person first. I mean I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but that's just natural. Human nature. I just think uh, for me personally reading this, I have more issues with your boyfriend than I do. Because well, you're not gonna punch with. either. I'd punch a bitch if Someone I wanted to. Someone is getting to. punched in my situation. Is what Why? I'm saying. Why do we need to be violent, John? I don't. That's just me. I don't. I don't Violence care. is not the answer. I think breaking up with your boyfriend Depends. is the answer. The fact that you've already found Depends. joking, flirty texts with inappropriate things. I mean, and and the, he's trying to downplay it, and then also like spin it to make it seem like it's this woman's fault. You need to be able to trust your boyfriend regardless of No, he's not spinning he's- anything. He's literally downplaying it, saying it's not a big deal. It's like all jokes. It's all fun. It's a fucking attention thing. Dude, that personality is so common. I, I know what? So many, like the, the flirty, like I need attention from other people. But because think- people think flirting is not, like it's like a, you know. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, I'm not like doing a- anything wrong. <laughs> I don't think you, I I think it's okay to have harmless. I think that there is a thing of harmless flirting, but when you're talking and texting outside of work and inappropriate things, no. Yeah, that crosses the line. Because that is emotional cheating. So we're in agreement. You you do need to speak to your boyfriend. That's number one. And confront him about all this and you're not okay with it. So where would she go from there though? Obviously her talking to him isn't actually doing anything. She already like expressed how she felt. If you weren't just going to go the route of, all right, break up with him, you know, what else can she do? I mean, it's just, you have to build that trust. Like you have to be able to trust your boyfriend. And I think over time, 
he will reveal himself to you. But I just feel like, I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like how he's acting already. But I just think like if it wasn't this one older female working with him, it would be someone else, you know, somewhere else. And like, again, you can't control where he works, who he speaks to. So you have to be trusting of him but and if, if you're can, not, like, that's understandable too. But, like, yeah. what are you going to do? Just bide your time until right. something actually bad happens? It's like you could do that or you could take initiative and, like, again, how we talk about seeking counseling or whatever, like, as far as having a mediator. But These types of questions are always tough because they're not black and white. It's like, do you wait until they do something? Do you go through their phone? Right. Like, do, do you catch them? Like, I think you just have to trust your gut. Like a lot of these situations, it's an instinct feeling, you know, like, and, and what else in your relationship? Like, it can't be just that one thing that is off. Like what else is there in your relationship that might be? Cause there must be right a now? reason he's acting that way. So, Personally, how long they've been together? Three years. He's bored. And they live together. He's bored. You think he's bored? Yeah. So that, he just wants attention. Faded. Yeah, that faded. He seems like an attention an attention seeking person. So it's like, you know, you have those endorphins and you're like all the puppy love stage and then it faded and now he's seeking that from someone else. I don't I don't know that like That's not okay, but I'm right. saying I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's it's obvious but i don't know that like boredom necessarily has to lead to that like that like it doesn't mean that i don't know i just like i don't, I don't know i have no answer that's my answer so well what do you think she should do talk to him about it i mean you well you already did but think like you said there's got to be other things going on i don't think necessarily anything's going on maybe maybe it's just the relationship's lackluster it's fading a little bit. He's seeking attention somewhere else. Right. That's not okay. But maybe if you are going to stay with him and you're going to wait until he truly reveals himself, like maybe look into how do you, you guys could spice up your relationship a little bit more. I don't know. Like it's not on you, but I think from what I'm hearing is boredom on his end. I say, fuck your boyfriend, break up with him. True. <laughs> But I'm just trying to give her another but avenue. That's on I mean, mediocre advice. We always say that all the time, like just break up with that person, which I agree. But I'm I just mean, trying just, to give like a different outlook on something you might be able to because breaking up's hard. I get it. You love this person, so 100. Like, percent But you could still love someone and know that they're not right for you. I just think like it's a trust thing. And again, like maybe you call him out on this and he changes his behavior. But I just don't like the way that, and and I, I also don't like the way that your friends are saying like message her husband like no your the boyfriend is part of him. the issue the problem yes. is him exactly yeah. okay moving on i've been with my soon-to-be husband for a few years now but i can't shake the jealousy over just about anything exes friends that are girls random people anytime that he even mentions a she the fact that he goes on boys trips to places where single partying people generally go we've had talks about my feelings and he's helped me feel better about it but i cannot shake the feeling of just not being good enough or feeling good enough in the beginning of our relationship he followed a lot of insta hotties slash porn stars and he had a lot of very successful and attractive female friends in his group he tells me all the time i have nothing to worry about but i just can't seem to get past it Anytime we're near an attractive woman, I feel insecure. I constantly feel like he's settling for me and just telling me what I want to hear. He has never really given me much proof that he's cheating or anything like that. It's mostly just been my insecurities, I guess. What do I do? This is exhausting. <laughs> this, this is, is ex exhausting. <laughs> has he, He's done nothing. Nothing done to nothing. Her. He just is You've surrounded I, by Did you get hotties. burned in the past, maybe? And I, if you have, go seek therapy because all you're going to do is ruin this fucking relationship you're in now yeah he's done nothing wrong it seems like he's even curbed some behaviors by like i guess he was following porn stars or whatever in the beginning but maybe he's not now it seems like he's trying to do anything to trying to do stuff to accommodate to you and how you feel and you need to look at that like this guy is he cares about you but you need to let him live his life and if you're gonna nitpick every little thing he does he's gonna he's gonna walk away it's exhausting we say it all the time that comparison is the thief of joy, but I think that 
confidence in yourself is what is going to be the most attractive thing. 100%. So you have to believe that he's with you and only has eyes for you because otherwise you're going to drive yourself crazy and you're going to drive this person away. But like you owe it to yourself to love yourself. I think that's ultimately what it is, like focusing on things that make you feel confident and whatever that is, whether it's like doing hobbies, getting outside, you know, you have to do the work Live on your yourself. own life too. Yeah. Yeah. Being, if you're not confident and you show it, I think it's a very unattractive trait to have. It's like certain mentality too. Like, like if you're a person, like we go to a party and I have to like baby you throughout the party because you're not talking to anyone. To make whatever, you feel like, like reassured I, also. I would, I would be like, right. this ain't working. I mean, some people like to like that and care for that. But at the same time, like it's exhausting and I could see it where it would be exhausting for your partner also to consistently have to reassure you. And again, I, I'm not saying that you aren't allowed to feel your feelings, but this, this is from within. This is not like an exterior, like unless he's doing something to make you feel insecure, you have to work on yourself. Him having hot friends that are girls, whatever is so it's irrelevant because he's never done anything to show to you that. And what do what do people say issue. in business too? Like, just because someone else is successful or they're they're you know shining does not mean that you can also not shine. That was butchered. But Sounds good though. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like you you just have to find whatever it is that makes you confident and believe in yourself and that you are worthy because at the end of the day, there will always be someone hotter than you. There will always be someone more successful than you, but you have to trust that your relationship is strong enough, like your foundation, that you're solid with one another. I agree. Because I know that like going around to parties, especially in LA, I'm like, damn, there's a lot of hot ladies around here. John could get whoever he wants. But I'm like, but so could I. <laughs> So could I. And I'm I like, agree. but at the end of the day, I also know like, John, I am your queen. That's right. <laughs> I just, yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> wow. We're, we're going through these questions. Flying. Flying. Next question. I have been with my fiance for seven years. We got engaged last year and he is the best thing that has ever happened to me. We have built a beautiful life and he is my biggest supporter and we are best friends. Recently, while surfing alone, I met this guy and we had a great first conversation. He is incredibly attractive, intelligent, driven, and confident, all the things. He is recently married and asked for my number at the end of the surf session so that, <laughs> so that he and I could hang out. I made it clear it Hang should, out. I made it clear it should be a double date because I'm engaged and he's married and I just didn't want him getting any ideas. Fast forward 2 months and we've all hung out a couple of times on double dates. Orgy. However, the more we hang out, the more I am growing a real crush on this guy. I am incredibly drawn to him and can't get him out of my head and I think he feels the same way. I feel guilty for <laughs> Do, I please can, just do, I, we don't I need keep, the rest of the question I keep waiting for you to like beat like to be like you suck like <laughs> dj john hold on let me finish i feel guilty for feeling this way and have two questions one should i just cut them off as friends to avoid anything from potentially happening two is it normal to love someone deeply and develop a serious crush on someone else this has never happened to me before and i'm constantly uneasy because the temptation is very real are you surprised are you surprised at all the route that this fucking episode took? Well, I mean, you, she... No, you, it's no, not like... You, it, it, wait, wait, it's not like she hung out with him one-on-one -on -one first. They met, and then they have hung out in a group. And now she's feeling like, oh, they hung, they, hung, they hung out one-on-one -on -one first, the surf lesson no, or whatever. No, but that's, that's how they met. It's not like... It was just the two of them? Uh, no, she was surfing alone and then met this guy. So it was just so, the two of them. So, no, John, it'd be like if I was on a run or if I was at the gym and then this I, guy. I, it's irrelevant. <laughs> You're not listening to me. The, she met this guy. There was a connection. No, no. But what I'm saying is she didn't do anything wrong the first time. Yes, she did. You're saying Are you ready the number for exchange? It? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You that... met one time. You're a female. Oh, hold on. He's a male. This guy wants your number. Yeah, Who but, does that? But she, but she immediately was like, she was interested immediately. You don't just give some random person your number. You don't ever just That's give true. some random guess, person your fucking number. I guess like, you you did you did this you did this to yourself. I guess I'm thinking 
like if I met someone and like had because like you're married right right right. I that's what I mean like I don't know that I would ever just willingly and be like well we could all hang out as a group like you and your wife if you have those feelings immediate feelings of attraction I don't know that I would give my number out to any dude any random dude like unless you're in the industry or something why the fuck would I give anyone my number but okay so like in the industry let's just like turn tables to make it like more relatable let's just say like I'm out of town. You go to some like content creator event or like, let's make it even bigger. The Oscars. Kate I'm Beckinsale. giving everyone my number. I'm actually <laughs> exactly. going, I'm actually going home with Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> You're out of town. You said <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale walks up and she goes, Hey, she's, uh, is she married? Doesn't matter. Does John see. So maybe she didn't do anything wrong here. You're wrong. And I'm punching Kate Beckinsale <laughs> in the fucking throat. <laughs> That'd be hot. No, <laughs> I wouldn't. I would be like, you guys have a beautiful life together. Oh my God. I I'm just out. like, is she surprised? Like, and now I'm having feelings from, you had feelings from the beginning. Do not say you didn't because you wouldn't have given your fucking number out. You caused this problem. <laughs> you caused this problem and you're going to cause this riff. I guess so. Like, I'm trying to think from her perspective. She's she, playing so, she's playing so like, oh, I didn't know. I, uh, you fucking knew. You knew exactly what you were doing. Shame okay, on you. Okay, but if a hottie patati came up to you like no, at the gym no. or something. I do this. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. Hi. No, no, look at you. Yeah, I mean, I not that I had a similar situation to this, but when we went to that one bar that like a few weeks ago that you got really drunk at, I was getting hit on, which I was like, oh my God, this haven't, hasn't happened in so long. Did you have like, a free drink? I, I tr okay, so this is what happened. Guy turns around and he goes, hey, like what what are you drinking? Like, what can I grab you to drink? And I literally, instead of thinking like, yeah, let me get a free drink out of this. I go, I'm married. <laughs> so I'm like, immediate conversation Kill. stopped. Killer. And I was like, fuck. And then he's like, okay. He's like, I still would have bought you a drink. He's like, but you just made it so weird. <laughs> he didn't buy me a drink. Good. Fuck that guy. Well, I know. And so I think that that's like, my initial instinct would be like, oh, friendly conversation. But no, like, I'm like, uh, don't talk to me, sir. I think that's slight attention seeking. Okay, well, too late. So now they've hung out in a group. Her fiance. Of course you have feelings. Her, not, yeah. his wife. So now they've hung out in a group. What do they do now? What do you think? What do you think you do? I mean, I think. Do you want to stay married or no? I think that you know, who, girl who's writing in, your gut you is know telling you cut them off as friends. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think that. Oh, you don't think that? No, no. I think her <laughs> How guts. Are we so I think her guts like I'm feeling this guy. Like there's no coming no, back. I'm there's saying no coming back. Her gut is saying to, like the right thing to do is cut him off. She didn't say that. She said, number one, should you just cut them off as friends to avoid anything from potentially happening? Yeah, I think oh, that's what yeah. you do. <laughs> so what are you saying? I don't know. If she actually said that. I was. Yeah. I thought it was like, what should Those I? Because she was. I thought she was like, I'm married, but I have feelings for this guy. What should I do? Yeah, no. And then she said, should I just cut them off as friends to avoid anything from potentially happening? No, no. You should do. You should torture yourself. You should keep the relationship going as friends, and then ruin your marriage by well, since continually you don't remember, hanging out with them. Let me let me read you her option too, which was, is it normal, or her question too, is it normal to love someone like her husband deeply and develop a crush on someone else? Define crush. Right. I think the fact that you are starting to develop romantic feelings for this guy, like exactly how much is this crush? Do you just think he's cute and fun and like, you know, to hang out with? Or are you- Fucking your being to him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I just noticed your your ring matches your shirt, your rubber ring. That's nice. I, know, I lost my other one. Yeah, I just think that you know the right path here, and it is to protect your marriage. John, stop. <laughs> Anyone who's watching would know what John just did. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think that it is normal to enough. It's over. We get it. Yes. Th in conclusion, we both agree. End it before it's too right. late. Yeah. You already did enough damage. Unless like you really don't like your husband. Like, are there issues in your relationship? And That's you're, like, true too. You know, like, are there issues in your relationship that you are seeking other, other people? Actually, no, no. <laughs> you still need to cut it off because that's not right either way. Because he's married too. <laughs> or that. I was <laughs> I more mean, so th thinking like you, you need to first 
deal with your current relationship, whether you're with this person or you're not going to be with this person. And then if you decide to go the route of you want to, well, the person's married. I'm sorry. No, just cut it I off. I just think like when you're unhappy, you want what you can't have. Like you always have a wandering eye when something, when you feel like you're missing something. So that's why I think we always say, look within your relationship. Like what is going on with your relationship that either your partner is feeling like they need to find someone else or that you're feeling like you need to find someone else. Like you would not have given your number away if you, like you didn't. Yeah, don't play dumb. That's very, this is very Wolf of Wall Street. Like uh, when Margot Robbie's like, we're not going to be friends. Mm. That's what that is. You know, except. Do that one more time. John, come on, relax. <laughs> relax now. Don't make me do my Brooklyn accent too. No, she, I just think, but he's also in the wrong here. Yeah, fuck that guy too. He gave your, I mean, he's the one that's super initially wrong. He's giving the number out and he's already married. You both, I think, have to figure out what's going on in your own relationships. But until then, I would not, be pursuing a friendship with this friend. The tough thing is how are you going to do it now without raising any alarms? I don't think that you necessarily just like have to be like, we can't hang out. You just don't. You just ghost them. Like you just are like, you're always busy. If they're always hanging out though, that's the problem. We don't know if they're always hanging out, but I think you know that you need to work on your marriage or work on it or don't work on it or don't. And then who knows? Maybe you guys will end up together. You and surfer boy can ride into the sunset once or you, you or you all separate. have an orgy and become <laughs> uh not a thruple. Oh, it's kind of like also actually this it's not like that at all. I was going to say what's that movie with what's her name? Blake Lively. Oh, Savages. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Next question. Someone I've been friends with for over 6 months called me by the wrong name today. Not once, but three times during a 10-minute interaction. I wasn't quick thinking enough to know how to reply, so I just let it go. They're moving away, so I guess my question is, would you still correct this friend? And if Alex and John, you found yourselves in that scenario, what would you have said to correct this friend in the moment? I feel so embarrassed about this situation, but at the same time, I feel like it's not even that big of a deal. Are you going to see this person again? or? I, I feel like... Like, I remember when my grandpa met you. Oh. Um, my grandpa had passed away now. But when he first met you for the, I think, in the first hour of interaction, he kept calling you Scott. He was like, I did not correct Where's him. Where's Scott? See in the bathroom? And I'm like, John, Grandpa, John. <laughs> and then, like, later. Did you even ever date a Scott? No, <laughs> no. And then, even. Did he know later, you were Alex? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. But even after, like, when we were leaving, he's like, nice to meet you, Scott. I was like, you too, sir. Yeah. And then later on, he even said to my parents, he was like, Scott's so great. <laughs> Scott. Uh, I think it would just, it's funny because it, it's actually be more funny if you become really good friends with this person. Let them figure it out on their exactly. own. Exactly. I think just like do it, leave it for the story. And yep. then just like then when they come to the realization, it would just, it'll Hopefully just be you're hilarious. There. Hopefully you're yeah. in the moment. There was a TikTok about that. It was a guy. He had a woman like working for him. And he was like, what's your name? And she had an accent. And so she forever was or he forever was like calling her the wrong name because she had like an accent and she was like, my name is blah, blah, blah. But he was like, oh, mana, mana, mana. Like didn't know what her name was. I have no idea what what you're saying right now. (laughs) Any, anyways, there's a, there's keep it for the story. There's a TikTok about that though, about someone calling someone for the wrong name forever. I don't know what the fuck Alex is talking about. (laughs) Anyways. Yeah. Keep it for for the story. Yeah. No, I think that's hilarious. (laughs) Well, I think that's it for questions. Anyways, Alex, do you have any icks for this yes, week? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, you got you got a lot? I do. No, not a lot. But just because we went to the movie theater, number one, I love popcorn so much. Like, I feel like the only reason why I go to the movies is to just get popcorn. However, I do feel like they need to lock it up in in some respect. With on, like the food situation. What they're serving. Like some food, which popcorn, I guess, is a Were they can be allowed to salmon? Food. Salmon? I don't think so. There was some like artistic food that they had there. But I Artisan swear food. the people, <laughs> <laughs> the 
like <laughs> we're doing wine and design now <laughs> yeah, at the movie theater it's all over the place but some the couple next to me i swear it was like build your own nachos they dump out a whole bag of tortilla chips they're pouring cheese over toppings and it's just like crunchy it's loud the bag is moving and i'm just like Shut the shut the fuck up! I was so glad I was sitting between Goo and Jacqueline because the guy next to Goo was actually leaning over to eat in like literally in Goo's space. And oh, I'm just I, sitting there like, what the fuck? Also, though, the seats that we had, they have like heaters now, like seat warmers and coolers. I had mine on the coolest Cooled. setting because I was hot as fuck. But yeah, no, my ick is just like, what is the etiquette around theater? I think, they're, I think they're doing too much. Yeah, do less. Because like people are already loud as it is. I don't know, though. Candies, though, and popcorn, like you could make anything loud. Like popcorn, you can make loud. The hard candies, you can make loud. You could just be loud. Or are we just being like old farts and be like, I know. what's with this new age yeah, movie yeah. theater situation? Everyone pop down. I don't know. But that's just my ick is when I'm watching a movie, don't talk to me. Don't make any noises. Coming from me, who usually asks questions, but my ick is just the random noises I'm continuously hearing throughout the night here with the explosions and booms. Somebody, I don't know if they're doing an orgasm scream. And then, like two times, I've heard this random noise and they're screaming. It's like sexual. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like it's so weird. It, they're yelling it. Is it outside? It's outside. It's in the backyard, and I'm like, are they coming? Like, what are they doing? It was, it's crazy. Like, loud. I have not heard it. Are I, you I'm going like, crazy? I don't know if they're fucking in the backyard or what they're doing, but it was I'm trying to find it out. <laughs> I have not heard any of those noises. Because you're asleep. <laughs> so it's only in the middle of the night. Like, no, don't get actually, they're yelling during the day. Yeah, what? But you don't even hear the explosions or anything. No. You know what my actual ick is? Me. You're, you're not, not alert. aware. You're not alert. Yes, I am. What if somebody John, you, broke in? I'm I need your. I need you to have my back. I need to be alert. Like I have a sense of smell. You could never smell when the propane was going in our house. I'm Natural like gas. propane. The gas is on. Yeah, I'm like you. Never know. We would die if you. If it was up to you, you can smell anything. Well, you're not gonna smell when you're asleep, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I'm the one who has the carbon monoxide thing. We're in this Airbnb, and I'm like, I'm bringing my own carbon monoxide. Because have you seen all those stories? That's like your new fear unlocked. Is like the carbon monoxide. New fear. I just feel like there's been so many stories of that happening more people will die from carbon monoxide poisoning than shark attacks and you're more afraid of sharks john oh yeah i'd rather die from carbon monoxide than a shark attacking me it's not a matter of what you would rather die to me it is no because that's it's what like, it comes down to which, if I one, got a choice. which one can you avoid though like you're sleeping in a new place you can't like that's you can walk out the door <laughs> No, you wouldn't know if you're sleeping. Yeah, well, but, but you unless know, you have. A you start detector. with a headache. No, not if you're sleeping. Well, I'm a light sleeper, <laughs> so I'll wake up to headache. No, you, you would just be like in your sleep. Like, no, you wouldn't, John. You would die in your sleep. You would die. So you would rather not bring a carbon monoxide. Bring whatever the fuck you want. You're welcome. I'm just saving your life, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Anyways, that's, that's it. That's on communication. That is it for today, for this week. Happy Guys, 4th of July. You know what we didn't do? Stay safe. A review. Review. We're so bad at that. I know. Guys. We go on other people's podcasts, and they're so good at like saying in the beginning, and we always forget. Guys, if you love us, leave us a review, because we love you. We love you. Leave a review. Five stars. We love you. Leave a review. I wow. like that. Wow. We should start that next week maybe if we remember we won't like subscribe <laughs> email, email comment if you want to reach us you can email us at hello at give it to me straight podcast.com you can find us everywhere on the internet at give it to me straight podcast and i think that's it we'll we will see you, see you next, next week, week. <laughs> is that your line that's your line go, yeah, you that's go. my line and we'll see you next week ciao ciao bye, bye.